So welcome to this episode of History Hunters. We are here at the Elk Grove Kostomnes Cemetery. It's a very old cemetery right next to Highway 99. We're here to look for the grave of a Donner Party survivor. In fact, she was a Donner. It's Alitha Donner or Alitha Donner, daughter of George Donner. She was it very- It still sounded like you said Donner of Donner, daughter of George Donner. <sighs> We're also going to look for the children of Elitha Donner. Uh, she survived a number of her children. A lot of them died tragic deaths. This Elk Grove Kasumnis Cemetery is pretty old. It dates back to 1874 and contains a lot of pioneer graves, such as the Samuel wardrobe that uh, Sarah just pointed out. His grave dates back to 1886. I'm going to assume that most of you know the Daughter Party story. The group of travelers from the Midwest who decided to take a wagon journey out to California, but they took an ill-advised route called Hastings Cutoff through the desert of Utah. They were trapped by the fall snowstorms of California's Sierra Nevada range. And from October 1846 to April 1847, half the group starved to death or died in the elements. Sarah found the grave. Lytha Donner. Big marker here. Talks about her being the survivor. She was the daughter of George and Mary Blue Donner. Born near Springfield, Illinois in 1832. She arrived in California December 1846 with her sister Leanna Charity Donner. She was buried in Jamestown. We did a show on her. She was rescued in the first relief party to reach the tragic scene near Donner Lake. She married at Benjamin Wilder, 1853. She died July 4th, 1923, survived by her sister and two children. Some people have placed pennies here on the grave. State of California has put a nice marker here in her honor. The first relief party reached the snowbound camp on February 22nd, 1847. Elitha and Leanna were among those rescued first to be taken to Sutter's Fort. Among her rescuers was a Perry McCoon. Being that there were very few females to marry, McCoon asked the emaciated 14-year-old Elitha if she would marry him. When another relief party returned with their sisters, they anxiously waited for their parents. However, they only brought news that their parents had perished in the mountains. Elitha and Perry were married at Sutter's Fort on June 1, 1847. Elitha was heartbroken to be leaving her young sisters behind. At first, Elitha slipped away with her husband, but found herself lonely. She returned to get her sisters to come live with them. The marriage was brief and not a very happy one. For a time, the coon managed a ranch and a ferry, but wasted the proceeds from the sale of the property by drinking and gambling. By 1850, he was impoverished. In January 1851, when he was about 30, he was reportedly showing off his riding skills when his foot became entangled and he was dragged to death by a horse. They had one daughter named Elizabeth, born about 1849, but who died in 1850. Elitha's second marriage to Benjamin Wilder, a brother of her half-sister Frances's husband, was a happy reunion. They married December 8, 1853. It appears that Elitha Donner was perhaps the least photographed of all the Donner children. We could only find one photo of her, this nice family portrait with husband Benjamin Wilder and daughter. Elitha is beautiful, yet she appears to be almost troubled in her composure. The truth is there are more photographs of her sisters. This is her only full sister, Leanna Donner App, who died in 1930. Her half-sisters included Frances Donner Wilder, who died in 1921 and is buried in Byron in Contra Costa County. Eliza, who was born in 1844, moved to Los Angeles and enjoyed her large family. Eliza is pictured here at right of Mary Bruner, a Swiss woman who took the orphan girls in once they reached Sutter's Fort. Eliza passed away in 1922 and is buried in Los Angeles alongside of her husband, Sherman Hooten, who was a former congressman. Georgia Anna Donner Babcock, seen here with her adoptive mother, Mary Bruner, lived until 1911. Georgia is buried at St. John Cemetery in St. John, Washington. So this historic cemetery where one of the daughters is buried 
I kid you not, it's right over the fence from a jack-in-the-box. Earlier I told you that the cemetery is located next to a jack-in-the-box, but it's also located right next to a towering overhead freeway sign that doesn't seem to visually respect these hollowed grounds at all. So this is a grave of J.B. Stevens. Now one of the children of Elitha Donner was Susan Wilmarth Wilder Stevens. She died in 1892. She's supposedly buried here. And she was married to Joseph Bonaparte, or J.B. Stevens. He died in 1921 at French camp, and this is his grave right here. I don't see Susan, so I'm not sure where she's buried. I would ask for some help to find these graves, but they're closed today. Right over here we have the Hoover plot, the B.B. Hoover. I don't know if he's related to the president, but I wouldn't doubt it. So one of the children of Elitha Donner who met his untimely fate was James Allen Wilder. He's buried somewhere here in 1919. He fell off a horse, fractured his skull, and died at the age of 57. Another son of Elitha Donner who met an untimely death was George Donner Wilder. In 1902, he hung himself after his wife and his children perished in a fire. That happened up in Bruceville. One of the daughters who lived a long life was Olive. She died in 1950. She'd never, never married. She was a school teacher. This is the grave of the earliest born in the cemetery, that of Samuel Stickney, born 1791 in New Hampshire. I just wonder if he's related to actress Dorothy Stickney. I do believe that uh, the members of the family that I can't find could be possibly buried in this wilder plot right here. So cemetery office is right here and behind is this obelisk, native of Rutland, Virginia. He died at the age of 34 in 1863. It's like he was a mason. This is Thaddeus Curtis McConnell. He arrived in California along with his brother Samuel in 1849. Together, the brothers opened a store selling vegetables to gold miners and continued to do so until their store burned to the ground in the fall of 1857. Thaddeus then purchased land in Sacramento, which is now Elk Grove, where he built the McConnell House. So we were coming up Highway 99 and we saw this old brick building over here. It's a stage stop built in 1850. One thing you probably don't know is that when Sacramento was uh, an early establishment here in the valley, it was a, a delta town, the capital of California was in Monterey. So the road between Sacramento and Monterey was called the Monterey Road or Monterey Highway. So this stage stop serviced people who were making the travel from the burgeoning town of Sacramento to the state capital in Monterey. Later, a docent told us that this Elk Grove stage stop is a reproduction of the one that sat right about where the lanes of Highway 99 run today. The original hotel was built in 1850, but this building only dates back to 1985. So this school is kind of loosely associated with the Donner Party in that it is named after Daniel Rhodes, who was a member of the first relief party that helped rescue the children that were trapped in the death camps at Donner Lake. He was a member of the first relief party, brought the children back down to Sacramento and Sutter's Fort. However, this school was moved in from Slough House. It's, it's not the original location here. It was in pretty bad shape and they reconstructed it. 
But yeah, the school carries the name of Daniel Rhodes. If it weren't for people like Daniel Rhodes, it would have been a much more tragic episode in history. There was a total of four relief parties to get the 40-something survivors of the Donner Party out. So Elk Grove has a lot of association with the Donner Party. Look, there's a robin. A robin? I saw a squirrel too. Yeah, I saw the squirrel, but the robin was over here. See, there she went. There's all kinds of critters here. Little house on the prairie, huh? Goose. Squirrel. There's a really cool bluebird over at that other place we were just at. What do you think of schoolhouse? Cool. So from the historic Elk Grove Kasumna Cemetery, containing the remains of a Donner Party survivor, I want to thank you so much for joining us on this episode of History Hunters. I hope that you give us a comment, give us a thumbs up, and please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future episodes of History Hunters.